What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. We're looking at LumaFusion 2.0. The update just came out. I was trying to get my hands on it earlier, but it just didn't work out. So we're looking at the official release now and I'm gonna go through some of the features and then we'll edit something and if you've seen any of my other tutorials, I kind of go over editing and color grading and things like that. Today, we're just gonna go over editing and I'll kind of just fast track through all that stuff, but I just wanna show the performance of it because there's been some improvements. I wanna show you some of the new UI elements that they've added. I love LumiFusion. I can't believe that like this program can do what it does, especially what they've added to it now. So you can do up to six tracks of video before you could only do three, I think. I kind of wanna show that it can stream three 4K clips simultaneously without any lag. I know that probably the newer iPad Pro could do like four or more. So we'll start by adding the first clip of 4K, the second clip of 4K, the third clip of 4K. And I know right now that this iPad can't handle more than three streams of 4K. I'm pretty sure that the 2018 iPad Pro could handle it. And especially once they come out with the iPad Pro this year, if they do come out with another generation, it'll definitely be able to handle this. But since this is like the last generation, I think it's 2017, it can play back three streams of 4K, no problem. And that's pretty good compared to some laptops that can't even handle that. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna scale these down just to prove that it can play three back. So we're gonna double click that. It's gonna take us into the properties. We're gonna scale this down. Doesn't have to be pretty. It's just gonna be proof that it can play three clips back without lagging. So we're gonna click on this one and to scale this down and put it on the other side, and then the background layer will just play back as its own. And here we go, three streams of 4K video right now. I can scrub it. It kind of feels a little laggy, but I'm pretty sure that it'll play it back smoothly. So we're gonna play it here. And as you can see, it's playing back three streams of 4K video, no lag. I'm pretty sure I couldn't do this before, and that's pretty impressive. So we can actually add up to six tracks now, so I can drag another clip in here. Drag another clip in here, and I can drag another clip in here. And there we go, we got six streams of 4K video right now. It definitely will not play back this smoothly. It will start to lag. As you can see right there, it just froze up. All right, I'm gonna remove all these clips out of here. That was just to show you that it could do that. And I'm gonna put together something that I shot at Anime North with Marissa. You guys know Marissa, she's been in a couple of videos, but uh, she likes to cosplay. And so I shot some video while she was at Anime North and I'm just gonna put together a little one minute clip thing for Instagram and we're gonna edit this in nine by 16. So we were at 16 by nine. So I'm gonna go down here to the little cog wheel and we're gonna change the frame to nine by 16. So they already have a frame already set up because they probably know you're gonna be doing that. We're shooting 30 frames per second, leave everything the way it is. Now there's gonna be a few things that pop up that are new and I'm gonna show you how to work with them and there's new things like markers and kind of like an overhead view of the timeline that's a little bit smaller just to show you where things are getting cut into. But first we're gonna start with the audio clip because editing to music is key. That's where you find the beats, where you make the cuts to match the audio and we're gonna start out with an audio track that I found on Epidemic Sound. I was linked down in the description, that's where I get all my music from, so check those guys out. You can get a free trial there as well. I always get my music from there and we got this track here and I'm gonna drop it in and I want it to start at a specific spot. So I think it's near the course or what you would consider a course. Yeah, I like where it goes. Yeah, so I'm gonna drop that in there. It only needs to be a minute, so I'm only gonna drag a little bit of it into it. So we're gonna take the clip here. We're gonna drag it down to the timeline. Pinch to zoom to make it bigger. All right, so we gotta find our first clip. So I'm gonna go through here and browse the video. I kinda like the stare she has right here, so I might start with right where she opens her eyes. And I'm only gonna use that piece because we're gonna actually slow this right down. So I'm just gonna set my out point right before the hair goes in front of her eye. And we're gonna drag that down into the timeline here. So I'm gonna double click that. We're gonna slow it down. And I also have to rotate it as well. 90 degrees. Right there. And scale it in. And we're gonna slow it down by going to this little speedometer thing here. And we're gonna go one quarter of the speed and see what that looks like. So I think 
right on the first kick there, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna do kind of like a quick montage of all of her setup so you can see all the different pieces that she's wearing. I might even start from here. I kind of like this framing right here. Yeah, so right on that kick drum, we're gonna cut. Click on that, we're gonna click the little snip tool here. And then we're just gonna delete this piece out of here. One thing you should do is turn on your options here to lock stuff. So I wanna lock the audio so it doesn't get touched because every time I drag in new clips, it can actually link itself. So I'm just gonna lock that off because we don't wanna adjust that at all. So I think this clip needs a little bit of a zoom in on it. So I'm gonna go back into it and we're gonna keyframe in some zooming. So right here, we're gonna add a keyframe. Let's hit this here. And then to the end here, go back in. And I'm gonna have another keyframe where it zooms in just a tiny little bit there. So now it should do a nice little zoom. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I wanna show the staff she has and maybe a little bit more of the costume. So I'm gonna do boom, 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 boom when the music gets to that spot, probably something like that. So again, this is at 120 frames per second, so it seems super shaky and jittery, but we're gonna slow that down. Then we're gonna drag that down. And this is clearly gonna be way too much. So we only need a small amount, so we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna rotate this to 90 degrees. We're gonna zoom out a bit and move this to frame here. So we see shoes, and then I wanna see her staff. I think I got a good shot of the staff here. Drag that down into here. And just because we can, I'm gonna put it on the third track. Double click it, we're gonna rotate it. We're gonna slow it down to quarter of the speed. Go back to the timeline. And so we're gonna go boom, boom, and then we're gonna cut on this next beat. Cut. But one thing you can already start seeing here is this little section here is kind of like an overview of the timeline. I think Final Cut Pro does something like that, and it kind of just gives you the overall frame. So if you were zoomed in really tight here, and you were like, oh, where are some of those clips? You can kind of see on here that you can see where they are and you can like kind of position the playhead to where you want it off that. So that's something new to this. And there's also new things like markers. So um, if you see this little thing here, it's a plus thing. You can set a marker and you could say, you know, staff and go done. And then you can change the color of that marker so we can make it orange. So now I can say, Okay, so what is this marker? Oh, that is the staff clip there. So it's pretty cool you can do that. You can also do it on the fly while you're playing it back. So you can play it here and you're like, oh, I need to add a marker. You can just drop it in. Obviously that clip is so fast, but you can go boom, add a marker. And you can also go back to that marker by clicking on it. But we're gonna click on the marker and just delete it by tapping the marker again. But as you can see, see how fast it is to jump to different parts in the video. So. Say we were over here, you can click on the little marker and it'll punch right into staff where you're starting on that actual clip. So we're gonna delete that because we don't need to have markers right now. So as you can see right now, we've got four tracks of video. Before we would have been limited to three. I don't need to set it up like this, but I just am because I can show you that you can do that. And the other cool thing is if you double click on the playback window, you can see down in the lower corner here our actual timeline. Uh, that's new, so you can actually go to your sections here. And you can also add markers while you're watching it back in this. And another thing that's really cool that LumaFusion added is you can actually airplay this to your TV as a second monitor, and you can just use the iPad as just timeline, basically. Uh, you can also set up a secondary monitor if you had the HDMI to Lightning or USB-C on the newer MacBook Pros. I don't have that, but I wanna show you guys what it looks like on my TV, because Samsung just added Apple TV somehow, and now I can airplay to my TV. All right, so just like the previous versions of LumaFusion, if you want to color grade these clips, you double click on them. And then you go down here to the right tab. And this is kind of our color options. And there's kind of some pre-made LUTs in here already. And you can actually add your own LUTs in here. And I've noticed that they've added, I think Filmic Pro added an update in here as well. Yeah, so 
Filmic Pro has some updates in here. If you shot this with Filmic Pro in your actual phone or with the iPad, this was shot on a Sony camera, so none of these LUTs will properly look right on here. But we can come in here and we can play around with some of this stuff. Um, I'm gonna actually just manually adjust these things. And just like in the previous versions of LumaFusion, you click on this clipboard here, you go copy. And that's gonna copy all the settings that you have and you can apply it to the next clip. So go in here and we'll just click the clipboard and we'll go paste and it'll copy all those color grading attributes that we had on the last clip. Now, not all of them are gonna work out perfectly, but in this case, it's gonna be pretty close. So we're gonna paste that in there. And that's basically it. I'm gonna go through, edit the rest here with color grading and show you what it looks like at the end. And then I'm gonna try and airplay it on the TV. All right, so I'm gonna try and airplay this to my TV. The Samsung just had the update. So I'm gonna swipe down, we'll go to screen mirroring. Uh, we see the Samsung on there. Uh, it's now mirroring. So as you can see, it's on my TV right now and I can scrub the timeline here. And there really isn't that much latency to be honest. So as you can see, there's a little bit of latency. It's not too bad. Uh, it's pretty smooth. And I think that with Apple TV, it's probably better than just doing it through Samsung streaming. One other thing I noticed here is when you go to save, you can actually save out a LumaFusion project package and you can save that to whatever your iCloud drive or Dropbox or anything like that. It saves the entire file here, which is pretty big. It's like 1.9 gigs, but it's pretty cool you can do that because you can maybe open this up on another iPad. All right, I think I went through most of the features of LumaFusion 2.0. It's not a sponsored video, I just love the software and like the fact that it's taking full advantage of the iPad Pro hardware and the things it can do now running three streams of 4K video on this 2017 iPad Pro. I think it's four streams on the new iPad Pro, but and the fact that you can actually have up to six tracks of video is pretty much all you'd really need on most mobile editing. Even three was enough for most things, but you've got extra audio tracks now and things like that and being able to add markers and also being able to actually airplay or add a secondary monitor to this thing. If the new iOS, I guess it's gonna be iPad OS comes out with mouse support and you already have keyboard support, it's gonna be pretty powerful. Like it's gonna probably knock out a lot of the competition with full on laptops. Big thanks to Marissa for being in this video. Can you believe that she actually made that? It looks really cool. She's really good at that stuff. And uh, yeah, check out her stuff. Put links in the description. I, I think that we're done here. And uh, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.